Well, hey, all you happy lost souls. Uh, I'm just going to be a quick video on some more of my gemstones and my you know, artifacts, stuff like that, but really just going to talk about the corundums and the gemstones um, in this massive, beautiful corundum where you can see all of the different formations of sapphire. And this is uh, aluminum oxide. So all corundum is aluminum oxide, and... Um, the dark red stuff that's real pretty we call rubies. The blue stuff are blue sapphires. Pretty much any color that is not considered a ruby is um, a sapphire. Now, in the streams around the hills where these big massive pieces were found, and this is the nicest one that's been in my yard. We dug out of the back hill for 30, 40 years. We thought it was quartz. You know, it's been in our front yard for about 30 years, actually. Um, and then I realized after getting a lot of this stuff identified as corundum, and you can see some of the really pretty red stuff in the back here. And, you know, when polished, this stuff gets really transparent. You know, you can see into the stone. And these beautiful uh, rubies. Now, when the aluminum oxide gets red, and we get these rubies, and sometimes we get these interesting star formations forming um, inside of them, the light will change color, you know, it will change the color on these when, when you get different kinds of light on them. Um, and I'm really kind of angry because I lost them, my little gem light brighter torch that I had. Aluminum oxide is very hard, so when you have a tile like this and you, you scrape an aluminum oxide stone across it, it's not going to leave a mark. In fact, it's actually going to remove some of the tile. Um, Quartz, if you scratch quartz against a tile, it's going to leave a mark behind. And we have a, you know, a rock that's softer and it's not, um, and not a sapphire and you scratch it on this, you're going to leave a mark. Um, you can see if I can find some quartz here. A piece that's like clearly more quartz or has some silicates. This could be yeah. that's my test. I mean it's taking some of the tile off. So a lot of the stuff that looks like quartz that's real blocky is really white sapphire in my area. And um that's one of the tests we do. I'm trying to find a stone that I know is uh is softer. Um I don't know if I have one out here. A lot of these are sapphire artifacts, you can see. Some of the real clear sapphire scrapers and like these little animal effigies. Look at this piece here of corundum. It's like shaped into a drill. Um, you can even see like the finger finger markings to hold. It. And there's the drill bit at the end right there. Um, so we get all these crazy uh, tools that people are making out of it. Here's a giant sapphire saw. Uh, it's brown sapphire, brown aluminum oxide. Now how they get their colors is if other trace metals. Um, in the surrounding areas uh, contaminate the growth of the pure aluminum oxide which is clear. Look at this giant piece of white sapphire. You can still see that corundum shape almost like a home plate. You get this like stuff that likes to color change when you get different light on it. This darker blue sapphire. You can see the like matrix right here. A sapphire inside of this this stone. But you see that corundum shape that it's keeping. Um, we get another piece of clear sapphire, and when it's in this blocky formation, you can really, really see. Again, a more clear piece of sapphire. You can really see that corundum formation. It's keeping that, you know, almost boop, 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 that little, you know, diamond formation. Sapphire will grow in these sheets a lot of times. This is like a piece of yellow sapphire, and you get light on it. Usually, it'll be very, very transparent like this. You know? Um, you know, the same thing with a lot of these. Look at look at this. <laughs> um, and it's the formations and how hard it is, and you can tell that it's not. Let's see, look. It'll light up inside of here, and you'll get these growths. Like it'll grow in these layers, in these sheets. And like you can really see that on the big, big white piece of corundum. You can see the layers, and it just growing in that pattern. And the other, the circle. And then you got a barrel shaped corundum behind it. And this thing's massive. You see the gem window here. You can just see how clear it is in there. 
And this is just huge. This is uh, over near 80 pounds. This is a huge red corundum. Um, you could see the sapphire running down the middle of it where the titanium oxide, which is what turns the sapphires blue, the corundum's blue, got to it. And this will not leave a mark. It'll only take tile off. So um, very hard. That's the point. It'll sound like glass. It'll sound like marbles. This stuff color changes back here. You see when different lights get on it because you got different layers. You got yellow with blue sapphire. This thing's beautiful here. This thing color changes like I call it the world on fire because sometimes it just looks like bright blue with flames in the back when certain light hits it. It's just crazy. It's got a really high clarity level to light on it. Um, a lot of reds. And I'll show you some of the real, like, that's a star one there. You can see the star formation in there. Is there ah, I should only drop that. <laughs> they're very slippery because they're very polished. And then this stuff, there's some crazy yellow ones. Look at this crazy blue one. Rough, rough sapphire here. This is gorgeous. Call it the cotton candy, but you can see the lines in the corundum and how it grows. That's how you get the star in. Look at this beautiful star right here. It's still in its corundum shape. And you get light, you know, behind these and the whole. This is not a good light, and I wish I had a better light. But... Get all my kids outside. Whew. Neighborhood kids freaking out out there. <sighs> I got a like big side yard, and that's where they all. I don't know, Always screaming, interrupting <laughs> any kind of video I make, but you can see the really clear sapphires um, and the clear, pure aluminum oxide, and then you get this milky color. But I want to show you it growing, and this is a piece of schist I cracked open because I saw the sapphire window on the back of this. You can see it right there. You see that window? It's very similar to this gem window that's forming on this big piece, if you, if you hold them up. But when we flip it over inside, and this is mica and, and different um, layers of mica and schist coming together, but inside you can see the sapphire and the aluminum oxide growing. And right here you have titanium oxide, this, this black material right here, a laminate, titanium oxide, and it actually turns some of these crystals back here um, to uh, like a color changing sapphire. They'll hit like a bluish pink color, but they're so clear. And you can really, really see them. And um, yeah, this stuff got mistaken as quartz at first, but we then zoomed in and saw the formations of the crystal, how uh, how they keep that corundum shape. And um, but what happens is this this stuff is formed in a in a small little area um, of southeastern Pennsylvania where some extremely interesting tectonic activity is occurring, and you get all these. Uh, upticks of the mantle coming in between two plates so we get these ones that are two-toned they're like uh, red and blue and this is a rougher and you know this might have this is in a matrix so it's not like pure but a lot of these are these beautiful this is an example of like a piece that broke off of a giant piece like this and got polished in a creek and was found in alluvial bed but, you know, a piece like this go for three, four hundred dollars. Uh, this thing's big. I mean, these are all pretty big stones uh, for sapphire. You get these beautiful ones like this. And then this, this different color, it's different like hints of red and expressions of different, you know. And when light hits these, they turn all different colors. So, uh, but. And you can see it's still in that barrel shape, but it broke off. And a lot of these in the creeks are going to break off. So, um, and the white stuff can really be uh, mistaken for quartz. But look at this thing light up. This one is one of my be like beautiful ones. Um, but yeah, this is all southeast Pennsylvania. But some culture, like I said, was making all kinds of crazy scrapers, artifacts, a turtle head. You know, different animals. You got the mammoth back there, the horse, um, the side profile of what looks like a fox or a coyote. All these scrapers made a yellow sapphire corundum. There's a weird color corundum back there. Also, in the area, because of all the metals, you're going to get these strange, bizarre 
uh, sapphires known as gold sheen sapphires. Um, again, I'll just slowly go over all of these um, beautiful yellow ones, and these are all rough stones. You know, like I go over them with a palm sander a little bit, get off all the filth and dirt. Um, sapphires luster. Um, so if you have any kind of uh, Scotch Brite paper, um, which you see in the bottom there, you can really shine these up, and you get this crazy luster on them. They're transparent too once they get cut and cleaned up. I mean, some of these are really nice. I still this and still crazy in it. <laughs> you can just see all of the actual matrices of this giant piece of white sapphire. So easy to mistake as quartz, but it's denser, heavier, um, and way harder. Uh, and then we got all kinds of little guys in here, different small ones that are really beautiful. I'll have to go through them all sometime. Uh, they all color change. Got a nice little ruby on top there. Um, and some rougher ones and here's some of that gold sheen sapphire I was talking about you see that thing all the starring in it and then if you get it in different directions you know you just could see how beautiful that is and it's still got its corundum formation but this is polished a little bit I thought it was copper for forever but it's it's not it's a crazy type of sapphire but look at that thing I mean is it getting crazier? Like, it doesn't. I mean, and when you're at different angles, it'll it'll do different things. It's very prismatic, kind of like a, a hologram almost in a lot of ways. Um, and you get them on these bigger pieces. Like, this is still faceted. You could see the corundum in its natural faceted shape, like a giant diamond from a video game. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is crazy. And stuff's very hard. Like if you thought it was soapstone and you went and went like this, you would leave a big mark. But you know, you don't get really, all you get is the tile coming off onto the stone. You don't get any mark on the tile. So, trying to find a softer stone. Like, like you see right there, this took off a bunch of the soapstone onto the tile because it's way softer, so it's actually eroding into the rock. Um, that's a that's a Celt, so I don't want to damage that because it's an actual artifact. Well, you get like all these little spearheads made from the corundums. Um, there's a blue sapphire corundum, like that was used as a spearhead. It's very flat and diamond looking, very Salutrian. You get these more mezzo points. There's a razor blade made of sapphire. Um, so, uh, you get these points made of it. There's a, a point, a sapphire point. That's, uh, that color changing stuff I showed you. They seem to be working with it not so much by using pressure flaking techniques, but by busting it off of percussion and then polishing it. And they might have used this real rough stuff like this. These tools over here, um, these quartzites and these have different metals in them too. Uh, different different tools for, for cutting either stone or you know looking like for cutting stone uh, but yeah just just amazing um, this wasn't something I you know just it was a realization I came to like through testing this the stone and and you know knowing that I had the corundums once once I tested them and had them looked at by people now what I really need help with is somewhere where I could take it and get it graded and like get a price on it so I could you know put one of these things in auction or something like that I would love to sell this giant one that's in my yard but I have no idea how to evaluate it um, or to you know appraise it to get it to where it has to go to get get a fair price that's what I was asking for help with but you have all kinds um, of corundums and even the most beautiful uh, pieces that are really really pure are still growing out of that shell and schist because what happens is there's aluminum in the shell and when it gets heated to a certain point the sapphire kind of grows out of that but as soon as it hits um, another silicate like sandstone limestone uh, quartz all that it won't grow through that it stops um, the clear stuff can really look like quartz and that's what I thought it was 